And also with the, and also with the. Good evening, good evening, good evening. I can't think of the word then. Good evening. Uh, here we are on Puzzle Combat uh, once again, and we are having a very brief look at. Uh, now this is actually more of a. Uh, this is a beginner's guide. A beginner's guide. Uh, so a player called, uh, or somebody on YouTube called. I believe I'm going to pronounce this wrong, but Safami or Safami asked me to just sort of talk a bit about uh, the role of the tank and setting up a defence team. So let us begin. Now, if you look at uh, this, my team here, obviously I've got five heroes in a line. I've got what? In. There we are. Die. There we are. Pimp. There we are. That's Welsh, by the way. So one, two, three, four, five. And the hero in the middle, number three, is going to be the tank. Now, the tank is going to be the hero that takes the most hits. And I'll just demonstrate why by going to tournament and going to battle. So the tank, if you look at my opponent, NQ, uh, you'll see that here is their team. So this is position number one, number two, number three, which is the tank, number four, and number five. So the tank takes most of the tile damage. And that is because of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows of tiles, the tank, aka okay, Rana here, is going to get hit by three out of those seven rows. Most of the other heroes can only be hit by one row. So if you see Talia here that's flashing at the minute up in the top corner, only this bottom row would hit Talia. Similarly, um, what's your name, fella? Quake could only be hit by this row, and so on and so forth. This is your tank, and this is the area that's going to take most of the tile damage um, in the first few moves of any raid, because they are the one most of the tiles are going to hit. Now, because it's a purple hero, I have taken one, two, three yellow heroes uh, to boost my tile damage. So you see each of those tiles that hit uh, Rana then did 300-odd damage. Boom, boom, boom. And Talia, uh, sorry, Rana is looking pretty weak. Now, it's not been an amazing board. I haven't actually been paying that close attention to it because I'm talking and I'm doing it. But I could read you with just a yellow, one more yellow tile to hit, to hit really. And I don't think that is looking like an option right now. Um, so Rana is going to be relatively vulnerable to my yellow tiles. Uh, Rana is quite a good tank. And I'll talk about why Rana is a good tank in a little bit. Um, but she is quite a good tank. There are various tanks that work and various tanks that don't. Um, there's various risks involved and everything else. So setting up a defence team can be quite a tricky business. Uh, ba -ba oh, this is not looking good. Mind you, then again, this wasn't about winning this raid. It was about explaining what the tank was. <laughs> there we are. See how, see how there I've managed to talk my way out of out of trouble. Uh, now, Quake is a very good tank because he has a taunt skill. Some special skills are better than others. Uh, I was going to show you, but he's dead, so that I probably shouldn't have killed him quite so quickly. Never mind, I can't complain because he's dead, and that makes me glad. Uh, I'm about to lose because 8-bit is going to finish off my... Um, Ico? I can't remember. Uh, no. Uh, too late anyway she did so there we are so uh, that wasn't a particularly successful raid but that is what we were talking about now um so the tank as i say is position number three now the other thing is you want generally speaking you want boosting heroes heroes that boost special skills to the left hand side um so you'll see when i say the left hand side obviously this uh is it oh, what, no hang on right is, yeah ico is off to my left um, she's possibly not the best hero to have there. Ryoko is, however, very effective because Ryoko is a booster. Uh, Ryoko does critical damage and boosts all attacks, um, which is really, really useful. Um, removes buffs from all enemies. So she is a very good booster. And you want your boosters on the left-hand side of your team. Um, the reason being is because when your defense team is attacked, they will go off in order starting with position one, then two, then three, then four, then five, if they all have their special skill ready at the same time. So your booster wants, your boosters want to be on the left hand side. The same thing goes, although I haven't got one here. Um, so let's see. Um, if I was setting this up as a defense team, and admittedly I wouldn't do this many of the same color. Here is my booster. Ryoko is my booster. Now then I might look for a weakener. Now weakeners are not actually all that common in this game. 
Um, somebody who weakens my opponent would be 8-bit. So where, what I mean by weakener. Uh, by weakening... Ooh, hello. By weakening 8-bit reduces defense against yellow for three turns for all enemies. So what happened is Ryoko here would get would go, I will make you strong and more accurate. And then 8-bit uh, would go, now, now that I am stronger, I will make you guys weaker, you puny fools. <laughs> he then impunies the enemy. And once the enemy is more puny, then uh, the rest of my team can do more damage. So you want your so basically your defense team wants to go like booster, weakener, uh, or there is an argument you could go weakener booster. I personally go booster weakener, but it's 50-50. Then you have your tank. Your tank is going to want to be somebody who's solid and can take a lot of hits. Generally speaking, uh, a healer is a reasonable option. So throttle is a reasonable one. Uh, somebody who does counter attack. Uh, where's my Rana? So Rana does a counterattack. That's very effective because it throws a lot of the damage back at the enemy. Um, so Rana can be very effective. Somebody who's just got who's very tough, like Aiko has been fairly leveled up, so she's pretty tough, reasonably resistant. Um, 602 armor, 1268 health. Um, oh, hang on. Um, so her... Uh, yeah, you can see at the minute all of her levels, except her health, she's got higher armor and stuff than 8 bit. That's just because I've got more, she's got more talent emblems and so on. But uh, yeah, you want somebody tough as a tank, or a he you know, a healer can be quite effective. Ideally, you want somebody with fast charge speed um, because that way they can kick back at your opponents a lot more quickly. And then these last two slots, four and five. Uh, these ones are a bit more open. These are where you want to put your, uh, you know, your other heroes, hit all heroes or snipers or whatever else. They they can then go in there um, because they've been uh, boosted. Uh, the enemy's been weakened. The tank is keeping everybody else alive. And then these two are there going. Uh, they're putting the punches in and the low slogs and everything else. Now there are a couple of exceptions um, which, that don't really apply to me. But if you have a reviving hero, and as far as I know, there's only Cassinia and Terminus. They want to be either in position one or position five uh, because they you want their charge to be ready. They want to go off once one or two or three. Once sorry, two, three or four are dead. Two, three, four. Uh, because then they'll bring them back to life, their mana, and then they go off and keep each other going and stuff. So Cassini or Terminus always want to be there or there. Um, that's kind of a key thing. So let's just see how that applies. In, I'm trying to talk it through as I go. So Astrid's a reasonable tank on this enemy team. I uh, can't colour stack against this because she's red and I'm not allowed to take blue heroes. Colour stacking means taking more than one of the same colour. Now, if I had blue heroes, uh, because of this board, she would die on the first move. Um, if I had three blue heroes against her, I guarantee this move here would kill her. Um, she would be dead instantly. But I don't have any blue heroes, and I can't take blue heroes because I'm not allowed to in this event. Um, but normally I'd take blue heroes and make her very, very, very dead. Um, now, a board really, I'm relying on yellows. It's going to be a slow board. It's not going to play out very well for me, this one, I don't think. Um, let's see... Now, you'll see the difference in damage that I can do when I hit Holden here with these three yellow tiles by moving. Uh, so there's a yellow tile just, just down, just under this red tile here. I'll slide that across and three yellow tiles. So you'll see how much damage they do to Holden. Boom! There we are. Not enough to kill him, but a few hundred each time. Um, if if you can imagine that, that, that originally there was a purple tank and that eight, that four in a row, five in a row, sorry, blue move, um, was all yellow tiles, he would have died instantly. So that's the effectiveness of colour stacking. Now, Astrid, uh, very, quite dangerous on a, like, sometimes, like, for a bloody battle tournament, bloody battle, there's no point putting a healer as your tank, um, because you can't, they can't heal. So on, in normal circumstances, a healer can be quite an effective tank, I personally believe, but in, in this one, a healer wouldn't be. Uh, because they can't do any healing, which means their special skill doesn't doesn't really count. Um, Astrid's quite effective because she sets my guys on fire, and because it's a, a, a bloody battle tournament, it's quite unlikely uh, that I will do. Um, what do you call it? That I will be able to heal or get rid of those skills. They tend to be linked to healers as well. Um, now you see that I I did there. I would argue I, I did the order wrong there. 
because I set off Ryoko uh, after 8-bit. I should have done Ryoko to boost, 8-bit to then weaken, and then that opens them up for the other guys to then sort of step in with some slamming attacks. And you'll see there's not all that much of them left. And then pew, 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 pew. Um, so I can't remember this guy's name with the tentacles. I'm going to call him Tentacle Bob. And this, hopefully, this move will kill him. Now, that move probably only killed uh, Pipluk there because she'd already been weakened and my guy was strengthened. So that is, you know, the boosting effect of the order. Um, hopefully that makes some kind of sense. So, is there anything else to add? So, yes. So, let's have a look. Let's go on to the next one. And let's have a, be a bit critical of them. Uh, okay. So, now, this team is a defence team. Now, they've put a healer in position number one. So, this is Jargal in position number one. That's fine. Normally, a, a healer can go in position number one. That can work quite well. Uh, healers, I would say, either want to be one, three, or five, personally. Um, I quite like him as a tank. Not everyone does. That's a matter of opinion. Uh, they basically, they, I quite like him in position five because then they'll heal everyone. This guy, though, he does boost as well. Uh, I think a little, well, not a huge amount of boosting. Bloody battle tournament, though, so he's a mistake to take. Uh, now, then you've got this guy, uh, overcharged harpoon. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, no reason to put him there. He could he'd probably be position four or five. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Jet set can stay there. And. Uh, I'd be tempted to put Zuri where this guy is because she weakens the enemy. At least it means their attack is not so strong. Now, Holden, uh, Fugitive Cyborg, where get plus 46 to an attack. Uh, he's a booster. He's also a very poor choice when you can't take blue. So I would put Holden, I would normally put Holden in position one or position two. Um, so I'd move Holden over. That would be my personal. Uh, feelings. So let's just see. Uh, this should be, doesn't mean it will be, but it should be a fairly easy win. So at this time, and now I don't think this will kill Holden outright, but you see the, the tile damage that the yellow tiles do. Boom, 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 boom. And second move, their tank is dead. Now that then means, I briefly mentioned as well, ghosting tiles. So when tiles hit an enemy, they boost their mana. So if you watch Jet Set here, here is Jet Set. Uh, when I move this purple tile over and go like that, you will see that her charge bar, her mana bar, sort of went up quite a bit because she was hit by a lot of tiles, and that's why she's got more mana than any of the other heroes. And because those were what we call, I would call off-colour tiles, they were ones I don't have a hero for, she took very, very little damage, but her charge went up quite a lot. Uh, so every tile that hits an enemy does, uh, increase the, um, does increase their charge, but obviously some powerful tiles can make them very dead as well, which is quite good. Um, so like if I'm hitting them with uh, with this with this team I've got at the minute if I'm hitting them with yellow tiles I can be reasonably sure that the amount of charge they gain is more than offset by the amount of damage that I do to them uh, boo, boo, boo. now I'm not really worried about uh, I want to say Jar yeah it is Jargal uh, you're not really worried about him he's he's a healer on a bloody battle tournament he, he normally he's quite effective but he's in this isn't the right tournament for him so I'm not too worried about him. So pew, 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 pew. And there we go. Ooh, they're all dead. Nope, not quite all dead. So Jargal can go off as much as he wants. So I'm not going to worry about giving Jargal tiles which feed him mana because he's still alive. Ooh, he lasted a few seconds longer than I thought he would. There we are. So that kind of uh, plays out. Now let's have a look at the next raid team and criticise them. Um, being critical and... Hmm... This is interesting. Right, okay. So, again, um, now, personally, on a... So, what I would do here to attack them, I would swap to a sort of red-based team to go with three reds. Um, so, as you can see... Now, if this was my defence team, it isn't, but if it was, strongest hero in the middle, uh, Blunderbuss, booster, slightly to the side, Ryoko, also booster, on this left-hand side. So, one and two slots are taken up by boosters. Boosters, weakeners, you know, they want to be there. Then my two sort of punching heroes are there, and that's the plan. Anyway, that's the essential plan. Uh, let's see what they've gone with now. They've got a lift. Um, yeah, immune to state ailments. Not that can be quite useful. That's a boosting thing. Blunderbuss, obviously booster. That's a good position for Blunderbuss. Uh, one or two, um, unless you're not allowed blues, in which case you can make a reasonable tank, which is why I put in a tank. 
Uh, Tony Miami's going to be moving one four four attack. Yeah, Zuri's probably right there. I would personally have gone with. I wouldn't have gone with that colour uh, on this. Uh, damage increase. Damage increase by each dead enemy. Summons a crow minion. Uh, yeah, be, yeah, probably right there. And a poisoner here, and he's quite effective. But he's easy. I would say that's. I'd say the positions were right. Only thing I would say was that. Um, you wouldn't want, I wouldn't personally have gone with a green tank given that you're not allowed blue heroes because it means I could just colour stack against them and so their tank died very, very quickly. Now I know uh, you may think, well, why didn't, you may have noticed then I didn't press Blunderbuss first. Blunderbuss is a bit of an exception to the rule. She's really good at boosting tile damage um, but she can make special skills miss and sometimes you want your special skills to hit to get things like this bleed damage on Blunderbuss and stuff like this. So sometimes it's worth setting off your heroes and then setting off Blunderbuss. It doesn't always follow, because if they hit when they've got Blunderbuss charged, the damage is amazing. But often she makes them miss and it can be really frustrating. But yeah, no, that's, that's my that's my thing anyway. Uh, so tiles flying up the way there. Uh, let's see, let's try it the other way around this time. So if I were to, there we are, Blunderbuss is done first. Let's see if these guys, how it goes. Pew, 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 pew. So I think one of them hit, one of them missed. So you can well, you can see the dangers of a hero that makes people miss, um, but also the advantages in terms of the damage they do, because there we are, see two um, Ico missed there, but a tile damage was immense, and then therefore he died, hooray. Uh, and then, right, let's have a quick look at the last team we're gonna face off against. Now this team has gone for the right color, because red, uh, I can't take blues, so red makes sense as a color for the tank. We have taken a healer, wouldn't have done that, uh, Jargal should not be there. Um, booster. No, Booster should be on this side. So Blunderbuss should be in position one or two to make their team stronger. As should Jargal, in fact. Uh, this guy... Uh, yeah, he could go in position two. Not amazing. And Ico should be in position number four or five uh, here or here unless she is the tank. That would be my personal opinion uh on this obviously it doesn't mean it's right uh, as i always say doesn't mean it's 100 percent. but that would be my personal advice so if i were taking this team if this was if this team uh if this was a team that i could only i had to take this team personally i would go with uh blunderbuss on in position one so blunderbuss would go here uh then Probably Tarnia, because she's a buff remover, which is quite useful. So that means that weakens any enemy by removing their own additional strength. Um, Ico is tank, because she's the strongest. Um, Jargol could go... Jargol in position 5, and Holden in position 4. That's what I'd go for. Uh, doesn't mean everyone would agree with me and everything else is you know it's, it's a game open to lots of interpretation but that would be my personal uh personal way of going for it so let's see boo, 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 boo. um yeah we are. some yellow tiles in play and hopefully this will be enough yellow tiles to make talia dead there we are talia dead um right choice of color for the tank definitely um i would you know question the positioning on the heroes and then boo, 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 boo. Tiles are flying. Now all of my heroes have got this uh, boosted quite heavily. Um, doesn't mean it's going to take me places, but they're all quite boosted. Uh, oh, there we are. Ico will die with this one. And that just leaves Blunderbuss. Blunderbuss is a very useful hero, but on her own, she's pretty much toast, unfortunately. Um, very useful booster, but not very strong when, they're, when all her friends are dead. And there we go. Um, so hopefully that sort of explained it. Now I know I'm explaining a defence team by showing you attack teams, which uh, by attacking other people's defence team, but hopefully give you some idea. I'm going to just hope that's the best I can do. Uh, I can't think of any better way to explain it than that at the moment. Anyway, there, hopefully there we are. Hopefully things have worked out there. Um, please do remember to like, share, comment and subscribe if you aren't already a subscriber. Make sure you press that uh, subscribe button. Um, you know, um, I do try and help out if people ask me a question. It does take me a while sometimes, but you know, I will try and get uh, get help help out there. Um, so you know, subscribe, subscribe, damn you, damn you to hell. Uh, sorry, hang on, I got sidetracked there. And uh, yeah, it just remains for me to say thank you very much for watching. Uh, good night, Nostar and Hoylvower. Goodbye, um, and may death come swiftly to your enemies.